Hello everyone, welcome to another exciting show, a show that a lot of people have been waiting for, uh, especially uh, these 12 finalists here. It is another week of the Gridiron Football Player of the Week show. This is week number three for us. And uh, first off, I mean, Zane Foster was our Player mm -hmm. of the Week last week, running back from Liberty, and we also had a defensive player week one in Brian Broussard. So those are players of the week in the first two weeks, and we got one of our closest battles we've ever had for a week three, and we're about, we're about to break down the final tally. Jace Lejeune alongside Alex Allison. Alex, another week, and Alex, this is really an exciting week when we talk about the player of the week. Yeah, historic. Uh, this is the, uh, we'll, we'll get into it, of course, you know, however long, but this is a new record for a number of votes and a new record for second place in number of votes. Uh, and uh, we'll talk about one of the closest races, an absolute photo finish, uh, back and forth contest, and uh, absolutely nothing to hang your head about if you finish second or anything like that in this. All 12 of these players are so deserving. These are some amazing games that we're going to get to talk about. And we'll talk about a really, really tight race at the end for who ended up winning it as well. Yeah, we had about over 40 nominations, 40, 45 nominations for Player of the Week. So for the whole list, I know you're watching the show, but for the breakdown, for the honorable men, all the honorable mentions about all the top 12 finishers and what they did this past week, make sure to go to our website, gridironfootballusa.com. And Alex, let's get right into it. Let's break down our 12 finalists, and we're starting with with number 12. He's actually one of my actually one of my votes, but he's actually the number 12 spot this week. Yes, number 12 this week is Landon Duckworth, voted by Jace and 33 <laughs> other people to make it for a total of 34. Votes. Votes. Yeah, but uh, from from the state of Alabama, you know, uh, you went yeah. to Alabama, right? Uh, but this is actually one of the top quarterbacks in the 2026 class in the country. He's a four-star quarterback, Landon Duckworth. He is a great one out of Jackson High School in, in Alabama. I mean, it was pretty crazy to see. Like, this is why I voted for him. He completed 24 of 31 passes for 535 yards. That's right, 535 and five touchdowns. Also showed his ability as a runner. Had 44 yards on the ground and a rushing touchdown. Add that all together. Had 579 yards and six total touchdowns and a 49 to seven win over Mobile Christian. Alex, what a way to start off or, or list when you have a guy that accounted for 500 yards and six six tutties. Yeah, absolutely. You know, maybe you would have finished a little bit higher, Jace Feud. You know, put in a few more votes, yeah, a little bit more yeah. time. You know, come on, man. You, you can. You, yeah, I got to put more slacking. effort into it. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> all jokes aside, though, uh, absolutely deserving performance. It tells you a lot about this list when when a guy that puts a five uh, a number that starts with five in any stat, uh, 500 yards is is finishing last part of that might have something to do with the out-of-state all that sort of stuff but uh, an unbelievable performance and when when we're cutting down the list and there were a lot of tough cuts that we had to make uh, from that 40 ish number down to 12 one of the things that stands out is the variety of the performance and uh, we saw we had a lot of running backs Whenever we, we're looking at running back numbers, and we're going to have a lot of running backs on this list, a lot of really, really good running backs, it's a little bit more difficult. But when you have a quarterback, we've, we, it's less often that we get to see a quarterback that puts up a number high 300s, 400s. Yeah. So when you see someone put up 500 yards <laughs> passing, it is incredible. We're not as versed in the Alabama state, mm -hmm. you know, high school football scene. We don't know that much about Mobile Christian. We don't know what that opponent looks like, but uh, you could do that to a Pee Wee team and it would be impressive. Yeah. It's just difficult to throw the football at the high school level in that way. And so for anyone to be able to do that, uh, absolutely deserving of just from this alone, you can start to see why he's a four-star prospect, okay. why he's one of the top players in the, in the, in the upcoming class as a junior. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, we're going to start off the list really with, with a couple quarterbacks. So we go from another quarterback to another one, and that's in Louisiana. Vermilion Catholic 
Uh, talk us about a number 11 guy. Yes, Vermilion Catholics, Jonathan Dartez with 87 votes. Yeah, he had a pretty good performance, too. He was no slouch as well, and Jonathan Dartez has been a great player for the Screaming Eagles over his career as a dual-threat quarterback for Brock Prejean. Uh, kind of reminds me of a high school version of, like, a Giant Manziel. Just really, really fun and really fun to watch. 29 carries, 294 yards, and four touchdowns would probably make you – bring you on this list as a running back alone but he also completed 10 of 19 passes for 128 yards and two touchdowns add that all together 428 total yards and six total touchdowns and by the way Alex he also broke the career rushing record in one game as well to add that on top and they played a really good Lauraville football team won a higher scoring shootout 47 to 36 and they needed Jonathan Dartez to put up those numbers in order for him to get the win. They needed almost every single one of those points. A six touchdown performance is absolutely unreal and it was a great performance. Um, we talked about where Jace's vote went. Uh, my vote was deciding between three different people. Two of them were the first two people on this list. Yeah, right. Uh, it jo goes to show just how difficult these decisions are for these voters and we have supporters and you're like, how much can you drive support for this oftentimes is what it ends up being. I only provided one vote. But we'll, <laughs> we'll get into that person later. But this performance was unreal. Yeah. I mean, you put up a running back stat line that alone probably gets you in at least the conversation for something mm -hmm. like this. And then you add another two touchdowns through the air, you add another 10 completions, another 100 something yards through the air, and it, that's, that is an unreal performance in a game that you needed it against a solid opponent. That's everything you like to see in, in, in something like this. Uh, great numbers, great stat line, great performance. Uh, by Mr. Dartez, absolutely deserving of being on here. Just someone has to finish towards the bottom, yeah. and it shows you how tough the competition is. That yeah. a performance that impressive got this low. Yeah, it's a great way to start off a list. Usually these are two candidates that we see at the top of the list. But remember, guys, this list is based on not just performance. That's how we narrow it down mm -hmm. to the finalists, but it's based on votes after that. So we're going to... Texas, so already we've got an Alabama guy, Louisiana guy, now a Texas guy from Melgen, Texas. Tell us, uh, Alex, about our number, actually um, from Holly, Texas. Tell us about our number 10 guy. Our number 10 is Camden Abels with 88 votes, narrowly beating out uh, Dartez at 87. Yeah, by one vote difference. So, uh, Holly, Texas, we're going to go to a young receiver, only, only a sophomore class of 2027. Uh, this shows you uh, he's going to be pretty good um, as well. Six catches for 264 yards and four touchdowns. Was really impressive when you catch four of those six passes, went for touchdowns, taking advantage of opportunities. 264 yards. Yards as well. That's a pretty impressive average there in a 54 to 21 win over Day Leon. Huge win for Holly and a great performance by Camden Abels. This week was so loaded. Six catches for 264 yards isn't a stat line that usually exists in a normal football game, like in a football game that, that is real. Uh, the the number of yards you're gaining per catch you're basically gaining half of the football field every time you touch the ball. You only get tackled twice. Uh, that's not how football works. Uh, you know, we, we say something like this every week, but it, it really is true. You, you don't see a stat line like this. And it's not the only stat line that, that is an insane from an efficiency standpoint instead of from a like overall yardage standpoint, although putting up 264 yards uh, re receiving is is really really impressive. It's the six catches. It's the it's the efficiency. It's it's how explosive he was on every single touch that he had. That it was basically yeah the game's gonna change every time he gets targeted. Every time he touches the ball, uh, the game changes, and that that leads to a great performance and a great win. So uh, great performance from Cam Camden Abel. Super deserving of being on the list. Uh, and again, like we've said over and over again at this point, the fact that he only finished 10th tells you a lot more about the people we're about to talk about than it does about him. Yeah, I'm sure the Abel's family was uh, able to get a lot of votes because uh, Camden's dad's actually the head football coach, Mitch ah. Abel. So yeah, you would you would consider that. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there were a lot of votes <laughs> that were going uh, by, by the Abel's family. And we appreciate Coach Abel's. He does a, a great job supporting what we do. So. 
Can his son Cannon really balled out? Six catches, 264 yards, and four touchdowns. And uh, speaking about familiar names, we got another familiar name who's actually going to be playing in a Grand Island Football All American Bowl game. Yes, number nine, we have Chad Elzey with 142 votes. Yeah, like I said, like uh, like I mentioned, Grand Island Football All American Bowl game commit. You can actually read more about him on our website, Grand Island Football usa.com and chad elsey makes his uh, debut this year after being a player of the year finalist last year and it was a short easy night for chad elsey when you only can carry the ball think about this he had five touches the entire game five carries 205 yards and four touchdowns think about that he touched the ball five times and only one time he got tackled so, yeah. four touchdowns on five carries, 205 yards, and a 56-12 win over St. Thomas Aquinas. Again, Chad Elsey, another day of the office for Chad Elsey. <laughs> yeah, this is absolutely, this is, this is one game. Usually when you're playing running back, you're the star running back of the team, one thing you're worried about is, like, tread on the tires, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, God, I'm going to get to 200 yards, but it's going to take me, you know, someone's going to run their body into me. 10, 15, 20 times to get there in order to have a great performance. He got tackled once. <laughs> nah, 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 no. And, and I'll be honest, I, and this isn't like I'm not some. At least expert. outside the end zone. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe someone maybe maybe got someone tackled got in the end zone. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe he broke that 50, <laughs> 50 yard run and then, and then someone finally got to him. Right, got right. To the end zone. Yeah, I guess that's possible. But, uh, you know, I, we saw this team in, in, in person. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to see, you're going to see him against I'm going to see him tonight, yeah. Uh, and that's going to be a fantastic oh, game. Oh, I'm, I'm excited for that game tonight. Uh, but I, it actually makes a little bit of a sense for him to put up a stat line like this. Mm -hmm. um, he's getting he's getting a lot of touches despite being a running back in like the slot, outside, getting him room. And when you do that, you might lose a little bit of volume, but you gain a lot of efficiency. Because once, once you have a guy that is as explosive and as athletic as Chad Elsey, he breaks one tackle and it's over. Mm -hmm. And that's how you average 50 yards a touch. Right. <laughs> you know, 40 yards a touch. And, and four touchdowns, you only get tackled once. People couldn't touch him in a game like this. Yeah, that that's unbelievable. You don't you don't you don't do this. You don't get tackled once and score four touchdowns. Yeah, averaging forty one yards a carry. How about that average? Yeah. <laughs> forty one yards a carry, really impressive. And we're actually going to go to the defensive side of the football up north, Louisiana, Alex, for our number eight player. At number eight this week, we have Andrew Foster with 157 votes. Yeah, we, we definitely talk about the defensive guys, too. It's not just the offensive guys. And Andrew Foster from Faraday High School had really stacked this, uh, the stat sheet with his performance. He had 10 and a half tackles, which is a lot for safety. He also had two PBUs, one interception, and a forced fumble. We did a little bit of everything. He was always around the football in a 32-14 win over Delta Charter. Yeah, it's difficult to put up huge numbers, especially as a safety, like any secondary player. But when you do, it gets it gets noticed. You know, he looked like the honey badger. <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> That's he what was. You, do. you don't log in a pick and a forced fumble in the same game usually mm -hmm. ever. Like no players usually in maybe a linebacker can. Right. But I mean, especially very, when your safety or so far away safety, from the ball. Yeah. Right. Being that close to the ball all the time uh, shows the kind of playmaking ability that he has. That he's you know consistently able to do that. He's surely able to tackle be a sure tackler and and just be all over the ball at all times whether it's being thrown his direction or being run towards him he's going to stop it and and that's something that you really covet in a player especially in the secondary you very very talented young player he's only a uh, sophomore class of 2027 and we're pretty much going to be speaking the same lines when we go to our next guy because he's only a ninth grader 2028 player from a garage high school in late charles and he speaking about being around the football he was around the football as well. Alex, tell us about our number seven guy. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is our first huge tier jump in terms of number of votes. So at number seven, we have Landon Mitchell with 1,876 votes. Yeah, we took a huge jump uh, from uh, number eight to number seven. And this is when we start talking about the fans really getting involved with the votes this week. Landon Mitchell, we talked about Andrew Foster with an interception, but he's also, he plays receiver and DB, but but we, he's on this list because of what he did on defense, and they needed every bit of those defensive plays. Three tackles, 
Three interceptions, which was really impressive, and two tackles for loss as well. And it was only a touchdown game, which they, which they won. 20-14 to 14 win over Star Char, which is a huge win for LeGrange. And that was a huge performance by Landon Mitchell. Three interceptions, uh, that is really hard to come by in a football game. Yeah, you love these guys that can make an impact both ways. We, we don't have like it, a huge offensive impact here, but he played both ways, and he was the difference on defense in a super close game. I think it's the closest game in terms of margin mm -hmm. that we have this week that we're talking about. And when you put up three picks, it's very similar, actually, in uh, to Brian Broussard's performance yeah, yeah. Uh, back in week one that ended up winning player of the week. You know, he played against a really good team team in Karen Crow in week one uh, with St. Thomas Moore. They won by six points. He had four picks. He was instrumental in winning that game. Exactly a very, very similar situation here. You win a game by six points. You win a game very close. Low scoring game and you're instrumental in why they won on defense. That's incredible. And the fact that he's playing both ways makes it even more impressive because that's such a difficult thing to do from a stamina perspective. Well, we're talking about playing both ways, Alex. Well, this guy, he played everything. I think he even drove the bus if he had to because that's <laughs> that's how good this kid was when we talk about our next player uh, at number six. Uh, at number six, we have Jalen Owens with 1,900 votes. Yeah, from Elton, Texas. So this is our uh, second player from the state of Texas that made our uh, finalists this week. And Jalen Owens uh, did his Taysom Hill impersonation from the, from this game. Look at the, look at this stat line: three catches for 116 yards and scored all three times as a receiver. Three catches, 116, and three touchdowns. Also, he can throw. He can't just uh, catch, he can throw two. He completed three of five passes for 50 yards, and two of them went for touchdowns, which was crazy. Also had five carries for 67 yards, so he can throw it, run it, catch it, he can also punt at two punts for 76 yards, including one inside the five-yard line in a 50-26 to 26 win over Austin McCallum. Jalen Owens, I'm sure he handles the water. He's a water boy, bus driver. I'm sure he calls plays. He did everything, <laughs> everything for Elgin High School. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, you, you know, he, he punted. I'm sure, you know, got him some reps kicking. I'm, I'm sure he, he you talked about being a water boy, <laughs> driving the bus, anything else. You know, did, did we get to see him lead block? I don't know if that yeah. was showcased in the highlights. Maybe maybe he, you know, uh, drove out someone, got, got, got a lead block as a fullback or something. But, yeah, he did everything. <laughs> Throwing, running, <laughs> catching. Uh, we talked about two-way guys. We talked about, you know, usually those two-ways are offense and defense. Not usually are we talking about, like, offense and special teams. Mm. But, yeah, you know, you, you put a punt inside the five, and you're also, you know, a guy that is contributing as a passer and contributing as a rusher and contributing as a receiver. And every time you touch the ball or throw it, it basically ends up in the end zone. Uh, yeah, I mean, did he – so he had three completions, two for touchdowns. He had three catches, three for touchdowns. Were any of them to himself? Did yeah, he can, like, yeah, it, it could have been. It feels like when you put up a stat like, like this, <laughs> that it's like, did he have one of those like Brett Favre or like the, the Patrick Mahomes contested catch from yeah. recently where gets tipped it up and then he catches it and then they're like, oh. When Marcus, uh, when Marcus Mario scored against Kansas City, yeah. He went a bat yes. down, he caught it, and he scored, so, like, something like that. Excuse me. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, you, you, we, we love guys here that can do a lot of different stuff. Talking about that versatility in the stat sheet, and it shows up in the performance. So for him to be able to do something like that, throwing the ball, running the ball, catching the ball, not the last guy we'll talk about that did something like this, uh, but to be able to do that is obviously – Incredibly impressive. You have to do some. You have to be something different athletically to be able to do that. Yeah, <laughs> for sure, for sure. You're absolutely right about that. And we're, we're actually flying through this list. We're going to our uh, number five player. At number five, we have Aiden Tate with 2,540 votes. Yeah, I mean uh, Aiden Tate actually jumped out to a big lead um, before, before actually getting. You know, there was a comeback at the end, but Aiden Tate had a big win. I mean, huge win for Pineville uh, to get a 39-36 win over Tioga. And then uh, also, they needed everything because he had 37 carries. Talking about being a workhorse, 37 carries, 412 yards, and four touchdowns, too. When you add in the two catches for 20 yards, he had 430 all-purpose yards. 
and the four touchdowns and a big win over Tioga. Aiden Tate was, was the main guy in that football game. Uh, so I apologize. This was the closest game that we had this entire <laughs> week. Yep. Uh, and we talked about our performance. We talked about our performance earlier where it's like you needed everything from that guy with the three picks to win by six. You needed everything, all 37 carries, both of the catches, touched the ball almost 40 times in a game that you won by three points. He... Congratulations to the Pineville Aiden Tates. To yeah, yeah <laughs> that's, right. That's not fair. <laughs> that's not fair to Pineville. Very good team. And when you have a, especially with a running back line, when you have a line like that, the offensive line is hugely contributing in that. So that's not fair to them. I want to be very clear. They also, I mean, Jacob Miranda is yeah. a uh, safety. Whole, I went to a yes, bowl game. Yes. Oh, yeah, he's going to be playing great, in a bowl game. So. Great team all around. But when you have a performance like that, it's the, a lot of it is shouldered on a running back, and this is one of those first. We, you know, we've had guys who've had put up put up good rushing lines, but this is the first true four. running back that put up a number in the four. The yeah. Four digit, the, not four digits. Started with the number four. Right. Uh, ab- absolutely unreal that, that he's able to do something like this, and in a game where they needed every bit of it, uh, you know. You, 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 he's one of those guys that he wakes up the next morning and he looks at a stat line like Chad Elsie's and he's like, oh God, I could have done this in t- 10% of the touches. <laughs> oh, man, because you, you put 37 carries, you're tired. That's a you're lot. You're sore yeah. the next morning. And, and it's it's a very deserving performance when you're able to do something like that. Uh, it, it shows number five. We still have four more. We still have four more. To talk yeah. about. But this is the sort of week that... Uh, is just so impressive. It's also showing how deep the running back classes this year. Mm-hmm. Um, and just in general, in, in Louisiana, I talked about earlier how we have like a bunch of running backs <laughs> that are like every single week, we have like four running backs that put mm-hmm. up however many yards. And so there are going to be a lot of them on this list, but yeah. also it means that in order to make it, you have to put up a number that even stands out among all of the running back stat lines you can compare it to. And it shows what Aiden Tate was able to do, how impressive that is, and how important it is to be able to be that impressive. Well, a little bit of a spoiler. The three of the next four you're going to be hearing about are running backs. Yeah. So uh, you'll be hearing a lot of running backs, including one of the best in the entire state, an LSU commit at our number four spot. At number four, we have JT Lindsay with 2,619 votes. Yeah, JT Lindsay, one of the best in the entire state. Like I said, committed to play for LSU. His recruiting really ramped up over the off season. And he's coming to his senior season with a lot of eyes on him. And um, I'm Coach Thomas Bachman. Yes, I give him the ball 30 times, and that's what they did against Desherhan. 30 carries for 250 yards and two touchdowns. You probably had some performances that were like statistically better, but they also played against Desherhan, which is a Louisiana powerhouse. And for him to run for 250 and two touchdowns against that football team that also has two LSU commits themselves is very impressive. JT Lindsay showing why he's one of the best players in the entire state. Uh, yeah, it, the opponent is the story here. That's nothing to, to it, the stat line is nothing to scoff at. Yeah. But you know, you compare it to someone like Elsie, you average 40 yards a carry and you're like why is this guy on here he only averaged like eight yards mm-hmm. a carry first off only eight yeah, yards a carry right. i mean eight and eight and a half yards a carry whatever it is is unbelievable but to do that against Nestor hand is not something you usually do and it, there's a reason why he's going to lsu right it's it, 250 yards in a game against a marquee opponent like that it's the sort of game i wasn't there for it i didn't watch mm-hmm. it but you can envision that it feels like, okay, Desert Hand's not a team that you punch them and they're gonna go down, right? That's what you get with a premier program like Desert Hand. So they keep coming back and they keep coming back and it just doesn't matter because you just give the ball to JT Lindsay when you have a lead and he's just gonna keep breaking off plays. You see those elite running backs in college football and in the NFL can do the same thing, that when you give the ball to them, you give them a lead and the game is just over. They can slam the door shut. And that's what JT Lindsay did here. 250 yards is a great performance. Maybe not as like statistically eye-popping as some of the numbers we talk- just talked about. We just talked about a guy that put up 400. Yeah. And not as high as a couple of the running backs that we'll talk about coming up, but absolutely deserving of being fourth on this list. 
Great performance by JT Lindsay. Again, the opponent, the context is yeah. so important when talking about a line like this. Yeah, we don't usually do this for, for all of opponents, but mm -hmm. a lot of times for, for some teams that it we also factor in the team that you play against. Yeah. So, like, that is very impressive to play against a team like Desert Hand. And they won by a pretty good margin. That's a huge win for the Trojans, 45 and 27 over the Wildcats. So, the Trojans, I, I kept on saying, ball in the boot as well, or other show that this is a team, do not sleep on them when it comes to a state championship this year, state championship run. Now, Another eye-popping performance by a running back, of course. We go to our number three player, Alex. Number three is Tristan LeBlanc with 4,017 votes. Yep, another close game. We had a couple close ones on here. The, this one was a 44-40 win wow. for Elton over Montgomery, and they needed all these touchdowns scored by Tristan LeBlanc. Had 26 carries, close to the 30 range, like we said before. 26 carries. 366 yards, that's right, and five touchdowns and a big win over Montgomery, 44 to 40. A workhorse performance from Tristan LeBlanc. Tristan has actually been a player of the week, not of, I guess, honorable mention the last couple of weeks, but he finally cracks the list and jumps all the way up to our top to a top three finish this week. Uh, yeah, I think I think Tristan LeBlanc is a great example of of how steep the competition is. Yeah. That you have a guy that has a has a performance like this that he can pull out of the bag, clutch, super important, getting those touchdowns that is the difference in you winning the game and not winning the game, uh, in a win by four points. You put up 388, or 388 yards, 360 yards, whatever, yeah. almost 400 yards. 366. 366, I yep. apologize. Almost 400 yards on fewer than 30 carries. Obviously, that's super impressive, super efficient. You're rushing for a first down every time you touch the ball. Uh, everything is, is great about that performance. And he was putting up really good performances before this, but the bar is just so high, especially as a running back, that f to get in, to, to get a chance to win player of the week, you have to, like... Be you have to overperform of the people that are overperforming, mm -hmm. and he did that this week. He finally was able to break through. Has had a great season already. You aren't an honorable mention in this without having a great season, without having putting together multiple great games. But uh, super happy for him to finally be, be finally be able to break through, and put up a great performance both statistically and in the voting, finishing yep. third with a number in the four like four thousand over four thousand votes. Absolutely nothing to scoff at. Yeah, it's gonna sound a little pedestrian. Yeah, <laughs> well, you're about, it's going to sound a little pedestrian. In a but little bit. very impressive, nonetheless. Well, um, before we go to our number two, because we know both these two communities w really went at it back and forth all week long to see who won Player of the Week. I just have to say, kudos to everybody. Round of applause. Gets a little clap from us because y'all have done an excellent job. Uh, pretty much everybody has donated. Uh, we 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 actually gained about two thousand over two thousand dollars this week alone, and it's because of you, the fans. We really appreciate the support from everybody that was able to donate. And just think of this: it goes to a great cause. All the money that's being donated to Gridiron Football is going towards the Gridiron Football All American Bowl game, which a lot of these guys on this list. Are going to be playing in, so you know, I'll just help with that donation. So, the full the, the money's going to go to the four MVPs from that game. We're trying to get them college scholarships as well, uh, after their performance, too. So, your your contribution was great, uh, in helping your player uh, get those votes because every I believe every 10 votes, every, every one, one, yeah, every dollar is 10 yeah. votes yes. uh, for Granada football. So we really appreciate it. And uh, really, we had, I think, donations from four different players uh, this week, four or five different players on the list. So we really appreciate everybody that was able to do that. Now, that being said, I know it was like, I know both those communities are saying, get on with it, Jace. Who won? Uh, so we're going to go to our number two player and Alex. It was the closest finish we've ever had. Who is our number two player this week? The absolute closest finish. And the number two player will be announced right after this. No, <laughs> uh, number two is sorry to our friends at Plaquemine. Mm. Number two is Nico Victorian with 19,040 votes. <clears throat> 19,040 <laughs> votes. Okay, a lot to talk about here. Yeah, a lot to talk about. 
Uh, I mean, I feel really bad because Nico was winning pretty much the almost the entire time, and then uh, we had a swarming comeback from uh, no pun intended from the Yellow Jackets, right? <laughs> uh, but we're gonna talk about later. Was a photo finish. Yeah, huge photos. I mean, incredible, right? Uh, Nico Victorian was very efficient, and he, he should he was right there for Player of the Week. Had a great performance against Bel Air. Completed 11 of 14 passes. Talk about efficiency right there. 250 yards and five touchdowns. So. Five of his 11 completions went into the end zone. Nico Victorian's a great quarterback uh, for, for the Green Devils. Uh, they won big over Bel Air, 62 to nothing in a district matchup. Huge win for the Green Devils. Nico Victorian was, was splendid in that football game. Anytime you can have more touchdown passes than incompletions and not turn the ball over either, that's what great quarterback play is. And Nico had himself a great quarterback performance. Yeah, and you talk about uh, an incredible performance where the ball only touches the ground three times. It's five touchdowns, only three incompletions. Five touchdowns on only 11 completions, yeah. which means every time he touches the ball, he throws the ball. It's not just not landing on the ground, it's usually ending up in the end zone, whether that be you know yards after catch or actually throwing it into the end zone, where it's just big play, big play, big play, big play. Every single time he's throwing the ball, he's throwing it to a guy that ends up being open, at least open enough to catch the ball and then make a big play, that it's just an onslaught. It's one of those games that you win the game 62 to nothing and it was just never in doubt. You know, there, there are different, again, we're, we don't get to go to all these games, but there are different games when you're playing, when you're watching high school football that you're like, well, it was a 17 point game, but it was a lot closer than that, or it was a 13 point game, but it was really never in doubt, stuff like that. There's no, nothing like that with a 62-point win. No. <laughs> not when you win 62 to nothing. Uh, when you do that, that's because the defense was dominant, and it's because the offense was dominant. You don't put up 60 points like that if the offense isn't dominant. And 14 throws and 5 touchdowns is pure domination. Yeah, Alex, and uh, it was a great performance, but just not enough to get our number one spot, which is insane. I mean, both both these two schools, and I mean, it went back and the forth. Communities. These communities went back and forth all week long. It could have been either one of them. Uh, really shout out to both these communities for stepping up and, and really uh, doing the, really uh, being involved with the, with the player of the week. It went back and forth. Could have gone either way. But in the end, we're going to announce who is our Gridiron Football Player of the Week in Week 3. Our Gridiron Football Player of the Week finished first in the voting by the slimmest of margins. Yes. Jonathan Walker with 19,863 votes. Yeah, it, it, it's amazing. Uh, I mean, it, it, it was a great, great uh, oh, overall round of applause to Iowa High School. I mean, they did a great job of supporting their player, Jonathan Walker, with, with voting. I mean, they voted and voted. It went back and forth. Really, Plaquemine, too. I mean, both both communities went back and forth in, in, uh, in terms of voting and donating. Like, it, it, was, it was really insane. Um, but impressive performance. This was a big win for Iowa, first of all. And Jonathan Walker was the forefront of it. Uh, we have a good relationship with Jonathan. Jonathan went to our uh, Green Island Football League camp last year and had a great, great performance there. And really impressive performance when you're able to go on the road, play Parkview Baptist, which is a big brand name program in Louisiana, and get an impressive 45-35 win. And, and Jonathan Walker, we know him more for offense, but he did it both on, on both sides of the football. He had 14 carries. 127 yards and two touchdowns, add two catches for 45 yards. And then look what he did on the defensive side of the football. I think that really put him over the top this week. Five tackles, two PBUs, and an interception in the 10-point win over Parkview Baptist. So two touchdowns on offense, over 100 yards rushing, five tackles, two PBUs, and INT. He was all over the football field for the, for the Yellow Jackets for Iowa. Congratulations to Jonathan Walker, um, Tom, Coach Tommy Johns, and uh, the, the whole community. Great performance for Jonathan. You are Gridiron Football Player of the Week in Week 3. Uh, congratulations to Jonathan. This is 
absolutely deserved. Uh, I talked about earlier how like I was deciding between one or two or three people. Actually, this was the guy I ended up voting for, Jonathan yeah. Walker. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I know that my one vote of the 19,863 <laughs> of them, that's the one that mattered. That's the one that got him over the top, I, I promise. Don't don't check that. Don't check the math. <laughs> I was, it was all me. It was all me. No, on, on a serious note, uh, uh, huge props to that entire community for both communities, both Bachman and I, yeah. for... Uh, being as competitive with this and it, it, make, it makes it fun. It makes it, it fun. It really does. Uh, both of these numbers, both from Victorian and Walker, were, would be the record highest yes. number of votes that we've ever had from either of these, like from anybody in the history of this show. Uh, and it's unfortunate for Nico that it ended up coinciding with the new record. Yeah. But it was it was a back and forth contest. Anyone could have taken it. But let's talk about Jonathan. Yeah. Uh, and talk about the actual performance and why yeah. I voted for him and why all of these votes came in for him. Yeah, there's so a reason. Deserving. There's yes. a reason why. <laughs> and you may look at that stat line and at first you start hearing it and you're like, eh, you know, 160 mm. yards, that's uh, what, okay. Yeah. And some catches. Two touchdowns. Two, two touchdowns. It's a good performance. Doesn't sound like it would normally qualify. Well, two things, and it's why not only it qualified, but also it earned my own vote. Mm -hmm. The opponent and the yes, specific view. variety of the performance. Mm -hmm. This isn't to take away from any of the performances by other players. Right. In you know, Parkview might not be in the dome this year. We'll see. It's it's Parkview Baptist. It's still Parkview Baptist. It's Parkview Baptist. Yeah. It doesn't mm -hmm. like you. You don't. It was a close win. It's mm -hmm. a ten point win. Over Parkview Baptist on the road, where a guy put up a stat line that looks like Travis Hunter. Yeah, that's yep. what that's what it is. He put up a very good running back stat line, had a couple of catches, and then on top of that, he was playing probably near 100 percent of the snaps. Yeah, because yep. he also lagged, logged a bunch of tackles and a huge interception. That's what it is to me. That he was not just playing both ways because in high school, playing both ways is impressive, but not. Mm -hmm that atypical it depends on the size of the school right, all that right. stuff but for a guy to not just play both ways but to be that impactful mm -hmm. on both sides of the football is unbelievable it's the opponent it's the performance it's the variety we talked about that earlier the variety of the performance running the ball uh catching the ball on defense coming up with a huge interception in a 10-point game, in a close game, against a big opponent, huge win for Iowa, and an amazing performance from Jonathan Walker. Everybody on this list had an amazing performance, deserving of not just qualifying, but potentially winning it. But my vote went to Jonathan Walker, and yeah. it, that's why. It was, it was a great performance, and absolutely deserving of him being the guy to win the Player of the Week. This Absolutely. Week. It was well deserved. I mean, to have that type of performance, two touchdowns on one side of the ball and interception on defense, and that makes a difference uh, in a 10 point game. So, uh, Jonathan Walker, we all know about him and his impact for uh, Iowa, and he was going to be an impact player for him. Well, he had an impact performance uh, that night, deserves to win. Congratulations, Jonathan. Really, uh, congratulations to, to Nico and Jonathan. I mean, those are the top two vote I mean highest votes we've ever gotten the highest number of votes we've ever gotten so uh, congratulations to to everybody that, that voted everybody that donated we really appreciate it and then don't worry Nico you can do this again like you can win player of the week so it's not over yet for the green devils uh have another great performance get back in our top 10 and then uh, we'll see. We'll see if uh, Nico can can win it. Uh, Jonathan, you know, since he's one player of the week, he mm -hmm. can't win it. That's a role. If you win it one time, you can't win it again. So we get other people involved. Uh, but still, congratulations to Jonathan. So in case people are wondering, okay, what does Jonathan get? Well, Jonathan will uh, get a Letterman jacket patch that says Gridiron Football Player of the Week. That will be mailed to him. So, uh, And he'll get a chance to show that, wear his varsity Letterman jacket, and put that on his varsity Letterman jacket. So, And he'll also get an interview with us as well, talk about his performance even more, kind of have a chance to promote himself as well. So, yeah, a lot of great stuff. He's going to be pinned on, on top of our social media pages for, for the next couple of days for being our Player of the Week. So uh, congratulations. Once again, Jonathan on great performance. So uh, if you tally up, we have a defensive player, we have an off, we have a running back, and we get a guy that, that yeah, doesn't. Two guy. Yeah, yeah that two-way guy, right? So uh, congratulations, Jonathan, and man, closest finish in Gridiron Football Player of the Week history um, over just a couple hundred votes, which is very insane.
So, yeah, a great, great week. Congratulations to all of them. And, yeah, I, <laughs> that's about it. Yeah, for this pretty week. much, right? If you want to wrap it up? I yeah, guess. yeah, Alex, uh, appreciate you coming on the show. We're looking forward to having you on week in, week out. And congratulations, Jonathan Walker, for winning Grand Iron Football Player of the Week. And, guys, continue to donate, uh, continue to vote. We'll have another uh, top 10 finalists, top 12 finalists for next week. Make sure to vote. Um, it's always going to be the same consistent thing. We'll, we'll post the finalists Monday night. Mm -hmm. You'll get a chance Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday morning. We'll close that Thursday at 9 o'clock. So make sure to vote for Gridiron Football Player of the Week. And we'll see you all next week on the Gridiron Football Player of the Week show.